Hey dude, it's Thub and it's a gorgeous day, so we're gonna work outside today. Although it is super windy, so we're gonna hide in here so that the microphone doesn't get all jacked up. Today's project, powered subwoofers. What's in them? Are they worth picking apart? Let's find out. And the first unit facing an end of life certification is this here, Panasonic. These are all powered subwoofers, and the reason why I haven't sold them is because they're all proprietary. What that means is they all have some fancy, unique, this system only plug-in that makes it very difficult to actually use these for anything else. For some of them, that's a cry and shame. All right, there, see all that space for a little 80 inch driver. Oh, wow. That's binding like crazy. Nobody's gonna be sad about this. Good thing I didn't sell that. That would've sounded terrible. All right, let's get into this. We're gonna use a screwdriver till I get bored. I'm bored. Wow. This one's just glue and plastic. All right, after we get all that garbage off, we've got a wooden box. See what Thubby's got for Christmas. After having a closer look, I realized that there's no, uh, there's no components in there. This one was powered, but it's powered from the outside source. So, forget this piece of junk. Also, look at this, particle board. Don't let it get wet or it's gonna go moldy. Next. This one's a Pioneer. It's a lot heavier. So it's probably actually, yeah, see, look. Now you would think you'd be able to use this for something, which is what I thought. But no, I tried it out and it won't even turn on unless it's getting a signal from these things. Proprietary garbage. All right, so we got an eight inch driver. Awesome. And then a chasm. How about over here, huh? Cool. That's got a fan on it if you want that. Now how do we get those out? Well, looks like it's got more screws. Looks loose enough to me. Bam! There's your guts. Wow, that looks interesting. Gotta be something good there. What we're looking at here is a power supply and an amplifier. There's that. Decent. Well, this has been fun, but let's speed things up. We got a piece of aluminum. Not a complete waste of time. And the rest of this stuff is basically trash. That have copper in it? Yes. How about that? Anything good? Nope, those are capacitors. Useless. Unless, if you work with electronics, these are a great source of all different sorts of capacitors and they're not even blown, so they're worth saving if you need those. What about those? Ooh, we got some pieces of copper. Do those have copper in them? Yes. What about those? Well, sure. And now these things, these are copper and these are brass and that is silver on there. Go ahead and pick those off if you want to. Next! Ooh, that's a Bose, or is it Bose? I've always wondered what makes these things so much more expensive. Let's find out. And before you give me any grief about how I could sell that, this one is also a proprietary connector. Yes, there's probably someone out there looking for this exact subwoofer because they've got the entire rest of the kit. It's a shame they didn't call me. <coughs> Screws! <coughs> All right, come on, have a look. Here's the front control board. I guess this is to protect the capacitors somehow? That's kind of nice. A little transformer. And 
the power supply is a lot smaller, but the aluminum heatsink is a lot nicer. What the balls? I don't know what's going on there. Does it shift? Oh, well, that's annoying. It's nice that it's got all this uh, stuff around it. Let me pop that amp out. Unplug everything. Oh, there you go. Off you come. There's our amp. It's actually really cool. Like everything is directly integrated into the heatsink, and it's all just slid in there. It's pretty neat construction. I suppose you could describe me as not disappointed. Ow! Balls! That sucked. Cool. A little tape. Now we got a half decent little heat sink. And this thing, it's actually covered in MLCCs. Somebody would buy this for scrap. Now I don't know how this thing is mounted, but let's see if we can get it off. There we go. That's a happy little power supply. And the only other thing left... is a relatively decent little speaker driver. Which is probably glued. Of course it's glued. Hey wow, check this one out. Ah. wonder how that got in there. I bet that was affecting their sound. And the rest of that... Now I did bring out my little scale so we could weigh up all the contents and add them up and see which was worth what. But that is really not worth the time to do. These are both completely... Let's use that time to compare what's inside both of them. So besides being a stack of junk particle board, which is worthless right from the factory, definitely worthless now, we've got these piles of treasure. This is the Bose, this is the Pioneer. Bose, Pioneer. Pioneer is a much larger power supply which goes in as a copper bearing motor, just like the rest of these pieces. It's also got a tiny and adorable little handful of number two copper, a little bit of wire, and an aluminum heat sink with a screw that's stuck on it. Get off of there, you're going to ruin everything. Yeah. Now the Bose, these Germans, wow, they're getting really good at efficient engineering. It's got a much smaller power supply and another one. So much less weight there. And I just grabbed this to show you. This is actually, in most things it would be wound up copper, but it is not. This is aluminum. You can tell because it's really, really easy to... Wait, hold on. Okay, I gave it a scrape and it's actually copper. Whatever. We'll add it to the pile. I don't care. But this aluminum heat sink, that's where the value is. One pound, nine ounces. Nice. Compare that to this one, just for fun. 10 ounces. So almost a pound. So the question we seek to answer with these little exposés, was it worth it? In this case, no! These are less than a dollar each. They would be worth doing if you were after a couple of these parts that you for something you were building. I mean, you got a power supply, you got a decent heat sink, and you've got these, uh, these little six inch drivers, which aren't bad. That's the Pioneer and that's the Bose. Bose? I don't know. Bose has this cool yellow underneath. This one's like the typical orange. This one's got a really heavy magnet. This one's got a small magnet. But uh, it's got a plast a nylon center cap. They're, they're both paper cones. So that's what you're paying for in a proprietary powered subwoofer as part of a home theater kit. Maybe don't pay for these products. Maybe buy a set of speakers that you really like, a powered subwoofer that suits your needs, and a home theater receiver that makes you really happy because it's got all the, your favorite buttons and dials and flashing lights. At least that way, when something craps out, everything else still holds some value and isn't completely useless without the entire kit functioning to go along with it. That's just my take. You guys leave it better than you found it, whatever you're up to. Keep doing the thing. Mm -hmm.